Grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfortable, because I have a story to tell. Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last six years. Over those six years, I've lived in a variety of different homes, different flats, different landlords, different experiences. And recently, I had um, just a really horrible experience. And now I don't wanna do this to seem clickbaity. I don't wanna do this as like, a, oh, let's have a pity party for me. I really just wanted to share these experiences um, because, wow, <laughs> I've learned a lot. And I hope that explaining some of the things that I've been through can help somebody else. And it is quite extensive. I have my laptop down here because I still have all my notes from when things happened. I'm going to tell you guys just part of it because I don't want this video to be like eight years long. If you like this video and you wanna see more videos of what it's truly like being a foreigner in the UK, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, Let's go. Some background info before we get going. My partner and I lived at the property for two years. We didn't have any issues with the neighbors. We didn't have, you know, the cops called on us at any point. We didn't have any loud parties. We didn't play any loud music. My partner and I are both pretty quiet, chill people. And I think both of us just want a quiet, peaceful, drama-free life. And I want this video to be a very straightforward, non-exaggerated, non-clickbaity story time. I'm just gonna tell you what I experienced. Of course, this is only one side of the story, so do with that what you will. But I, I hope you like this video. Buckle up. Our first major issue was we had no hot water, baby. Now, shortly after moving in, I mean within, God, a month probably, we realized we had no hot water. So in this particular flat, it had like a water tank. I'm not gonna use the proper words because I don't know them, but our system was basically we had a water tank. It would heat up all of the water in the nighttime. And then during the day, you would have that much hot water. And we realized that near the end of the day, we were running out of hot water, which was unusual. But then we thought maybe we just used too much that day. But then the next day we had no hot water. So it meant that the tank had not heated up in the night, basically. So we contact the landlord. Now here's a life lesson. <laughs> ding, ding, here's a life lesson. The landlord had asked that if we had any problems to come to him directly so he could sort it. Okay. <laughs> you know where this is going. Now, looking back at this situation, we could have gone to the letting agency because this was a landlord letting agency system. We weren't renting it directly from him. There was a letting agency involved. We could have gone straight to them and said, hey, we have no hot water. They could have requested like an emergency plumber or whoever to come out at the expense of the landlord. However, we had just moved in and we didn't want to you know, rock the boat, we wanted to be accommodating. So we tell the landlord we've got no hot water. It takes 10 days to get fixed, which means that we are going to the gym to shower because having a cold shower every once in a while is a little bit refreshing, but having them for 10 days in a row is a bit much. But it was fixed after 10 days and this was only the beginning. Next up, I was electrocuted. No, actually. In the flat, we had a dishwasher, which love a dishwasher. Not all properties have a dishwasher. So I was very excited to have a dishwasher. Now I was unloading said dishwasher and I touched it, obviously. <laughs> I'm taking dishes out. And I got the worst shock I have ever had ever, until this day, still. It was one of those ones where it hurt so bad, like my heart hurt and I screamed and I was so surprised because I just never felt um, a, a shock like that before. So we tell the landlord something's wrong with the dishwasher. We have had a severe shock. We need someone to come look at it. A Couple days later, 
it wasn't right away, at least put me four or five days later, someone comes to look at it. Now this guy tells us that the dishwasher is connected to the mains, which may mean more to some of you than it did to me. But essentially he said that he could not legally leave the property, leaving the dishwasher as it was because it was connected or it was touching the mains in some way. And legally he could not leave it that way. So he disconnected everything. All in all, it took a few months before this whole issue was sorted. Um, so I was no longer electrocuted. Uh, quite an experience. Next up, we had an electrical fire while we were asleep. <laughs> yeah. So this particular flat primarily used storage heaters. Now, lots of British people are gonna know more about them than I do because I'm a Canadian and I don't really understand radiators, but essentially, from my minimal understanding, a storage radiator has like bricks and stuff in it. And in the night, it heats up. So during the day, you can change like the nozzle to decide how much hot air comes out of it. So if it's really cold, you want a lot of hot air. If it's not too cold, a little hot air, whatever. So on one day in December of all times, it's extremely cold. And we realize that the flat is really cold. Now we have this one main storage heater and you touch it and you realize that it's not cold, which means it hadn't heated up in the night. Of course, we didn't notice it right at first, but now that it is, you know, well into the afternoon, it's freezing. And we realize that this storage heater has not Heat it up and it's not sending out hot air in the middle of December. Fun. So we tell the landlord a couple of days later, a guy comes by to look at it. He's looking at the wires like in the wall and he basically says something along the lines of that it caught fire and the fuse didn't trip. So you can see the charred wires in the wall. And um, yeah, kind of terrifying. At this point, we learn that the electrics had not been checked in over 10 years. So a lot of stuff is coming up all at once. We've had this electrical fire while we were asleep. Thankfully, it didn't burn the flat down. We were without heat all in all for five days because of this whole situation. And then we also learned that the electrics had not been tested or checked in 10 years. But let's move on. Another issue we had is that the landlord never gave us warning when he would come over. Now, as a young person, as a foreigner, as someone who's a bit naive perhaps in this situation, I didn't know the law specifically, but I was pretty sure that a landlord had to give notice. Some places it's 48 hours, 24 hours. At the very least, I knew that the landlord could not just be coming over, um, but that happened the entire time. Um, there was never any notice of the landlord coming over, he would just show up. On top of this, we had two instances where the landlord entered the property without giving us warning that he was even coming over and certainly not giving us warning that he was going to be entering the property, but we had video footage of this happening. And um, how do I explain this? Well, it's kind of scary. I don't know this person. I don't know anything about them other than they are the landlord. You want to be trusting, obviously, but it is very, you know, invasion of privacy to have this person not only come over just whenever, but also enter the property without informing us. Next, I would like to talk about our broken toilet, if you don't mind. Now, obviously we have since moved from that property. So at this point, the landlord knew that we were moving and our toilet broke, our only toilet in the flat. It got to the point where you would have to like pour water into the toilet to get it to flush, <laughs> not ideal. And my partner and I both work from home. So it's not like in any of these instances when we didn't have hot water or we didn't have a properly working toilet or we didn't have heating, we couldn't like go to the office during the day. We were at home all day, every day. And at this point, yeah, the toilet not working. Now we tell the landlord about five days later, a guy comes over to have a look at it. He's very nice, he's very polite. He actually tells us 
that the landlord told him not to fix it if it could wait. Which kind of hurt, it is our only toilet in this flat. Anyway, all in all, that final week, uh, we were dumping water into the toilet to get it to flush. <laughs> not something that I would recommend to anybody. Next up was the doorbell fiasco. Yes, that's a thing. So in the property, there was like an external door that had a buzzer. So when someone came to that door, they could ring the buzzer, it would ring in the flat. You could then open that um, door to let them in. You could talk to them through it. Because people weren't coming to like the front door, it was like a separate front door. Anyway, that broke very early on when we moved in, but it's pretty important because otherwise you have no idea if someone is at the door or not. So instead of getting that whole system fixed, the landlord said, well, how about this? If you pay for half of a ring doorbell, he'll pay for the other half. And then when we leave the property, we can take that doorbell with us. Now, not really ideal because when we move, maybe we're moving to a house that already has a doorbell. But again, we wanted to be accommodating. We didn't really want to insist that the buzzer be fixed, although that would have been better for us. We said, okay, sure, we'll pay for half of this doorbell. He's gonna pay for the other half and he says that we can take it with us. Okay, now this little side story is purely speculation. This is just my thoughts, okay? This is just a separate thing. I just wanna share it with you. We sent him the money for a new ring doorbell. Eventually he comes over with the doorbell, puts it up, we can sign in to the system and use it. When we sign in, the image quality was really bad. Like it was really degraded. Um, it just, it was almost unusable. Like it was not good. So we went back to him and said, I really appreciate that you've bought this. Um, can you please return it to Amazon? Because it's obviously faulty or something, or like it just, it's not working properly. And since you just bought it, it'll still be within the refund period because this one is almost, it's not worth the money. Now, again, speculation. We did a little bit of a Google and the type of doorbell that he brought over, the type of ring doorbell, was no longer sold on Amazon. Um, perhaps he bought it on eBay, perhaps he got it from someplace else. Speculation, <laughs> we kind of started thinking that perhaps this was his old doorbell. So we gave him half of a new ring doorbell, which he perhaps bought for himself and gave us his old doorbell that was no longer sold on Amazon. Again, total speculation and I don't know, but all we know is that the video quality sucked. So eventually he agrees, okay, fine. He buys another ring doorbell. This time he sends us the confirmation email from Amazon that he's bought it. He sends us the tracking link and the doorbell comes directly to us. Whereas the other kind of mysterious doorbell, he just sort of brought over and installed. So. Ring doorbell finally gets up. We've paid for half. He says in texts and in emails that we can take it with us. Please put a pin in this story for later. Now for this section, I'm just gonna call it threatening and scary. There were two separate incidences where the landlord was verbally abusive and scary and threatening. One over the phone and one uh, he got right up in my partner's face and was screaming. Um, in no way is that acceptable, of course. In the moment, you feel so vulnerable and threatened and scared, you know, as a young person who's renting to have this grown man screaming at you um, is quite scary. So let me explain. So the conflict in person was basically the letting agency sent over an agent to do a six month inspection of the flat. So someone comes over, looks at things, talks to you, asks you questions. It's all, you know, quite formal, written down photos and all that kind of stuff is like a check-in to see how it's going. Um, there are external steps into the property and the landlord had put down these sort of mats um, because it, it could get really icy and we had slipped a couple of times. So the landlord's solution was to kind of like zip tie these mats onto the stairs. I know there's a lot of information. Anyway, basically the agent tripped 
on the stairs and commented that this and <laughs> these mats are like their own health and safety issue. So the landlord comes over and my partner explains to him, this, this report has been done. Um, I just want to let you know some of the things that they brought up because they're gonna bring it to you. So it was kind of like, just like a heads up, like this is happening. And so my partner says the letting agent actually tripped on these mats and <laughs> the landlord says, um, basically calls them a clumsy and kind of like goes off on quite a sexist rant. I know, keep with me, the story's not over. To which my partner eventually says, um, I'm really, it was, a, it was a guy, to which the landlord flips out even more and he's like, that's even worse. And he's getting right up in my partner's face, like really screaming about this situation. Um, and it, it was just it, like shocking, um, scary, <laughs> um, just not good. And actually you guys have not met my partner, but please believe me when I say that he is the most kind and calm person. You know, when I'm having a meltdown, when my YouTube videos don't do well, or, um, you know, I'm just having a meltdown just cause, you know, he is the person that is truly kind and just like calm and just truly wonderful. So to think about him getting screamed at at his face by this man, it just like kind of breaks my heart. And of course, we also had a second conflict where the landlord screamed at my partner over the phone. Put a pin in that, we're gonna come back to it. Now over our two years at the property, I think these are the biggest issues. There's more, there's a lot more, but honestly, I don't think it's worth even getting into it because we are moving on to part two. After all this happened and all the issues and the conflict and the screaming and just everything all together, we decided, you know what? I think it's time to move on. So we started looking at properties. We had like email alerts. We viewed a couple of them. We viewed this place and we said, you know what? This place is special. Let's go for it. Now the rental market I find, especially down here in the Southeast is quite competitive. So we put our interest forward for the property. We were not the only people. There were other people who also wanted it. So the landlord, um, the letting agency for this place came to us and said, um, we know you're interested. We need to run a check on you guys, you know, to make sure we are who we say we are. We earn what we say we earn, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they want to run a check before they offer you anything. So we said, sure, makes sense. Now they were very clear that by running this check did not mean that we were going to be given the property. We had nothing in writing. We had no approval. It was literally just a preliminary check to sort of weed out certain people because there's a lot of people interested in this flat. Now, that check went to our current letting agency, which makes sense. Um, check to make sure, you know, we pay our rent, check to make sure the address that we've listed is the actual address that we are living at, all that kind of stuff. But it goes to our current letting agency. Now, at this point, a lot of stuff happens all at once. We receive this email from our current letting agency. Now this is not a temp, this is not an assistant, this is not an intern. This was sent to us by the head of business operations. I'll give you a second to have a read. Now when I read this email, I read it as, I have received a reference request for you. So the check that the new letting agency has pinged over to the old letting agency. I have not yet completed this as if I do, I will have to say that you have not given notice to leave our current address and you will not then meet good Lord's criteria. So when I read that email, to me, it sounds like because we haven't given 30 days notice on our current property, the check for the new property is going to fail. And good Lord is um, like a portal that a lot of these agencies letting agencies use. So they're saying, I haven't completed the check yet because if I do, they're gonna have to tell the new place we have not given notice and then we will not meet the agency's criteria. So we would lose this property, we would, we would fail the check. Okay, does that seem reasonable? From that email, that's what we 
our hearing. Now, our first thought was, oh no, <laughs> we're gonna lose this new property. So we respond over email and over phone, basically saying, I'm really sorry, we didn't realize that we would need to give notice before this check, but if you require 30 days notice, then this is us giving 30 days notice so you can complete the check. That was a mistake, wasn't it? Now, once we started thinking about it more, we're talking to people and we're talking to each other, we realize that this doesn't make sense because now we have put in official 30 days notice on our current home before we have been approved or offered the new flat. So this new flat, this new letting agency could very well fall through. It doesn't matter because we have given 30 days and we have to be out in 30 days. I can't really, like, I kind of feel like I'm getting flushed just sort of thinking about it. And I almost, almost want to like cry because it was so, it felt, it felt like we were being lied to. Um, we spoke to the new letting agency and explained and basically said, I'm really sorry. Um, we were told from the current letting agency that we had to give notice. So we were going to fail the check. So we've done that. And now we realize that maybe we shouldn't have done that. And he basically told us that's utter bollocks. They shouldn't have done that. They know better. That's not necessary. Um, but it's done. And I just get like really upset about it because the stress, I cannot tell you the stress of potentially we're not going to get this new property. Um, and we are going to have to leave this other property. And this is happening during the pandemic. Um, we will have nowhere to go. We will have nowhere to put our stuff. Um, it was just truly horrible. And um, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but we're not done yet. So shortly after this whole fiasco, the landlord calls. So the landlord has been told that we are moving on and he wants to know if there's anything that could be done differently for the new tenant. You know, kind of like, why, why are you moving? Is something wrong? My partner, very pleasant, not interested in getting into a conflict, basically says, we've seen a new property this place. It's just, it feels right, feels time to move on and try something new. Very neutral, but the landlord persists. He's saying, you know, I need to know what the issue is so the new tenant can have an enjoyable experience, yada, yada. He, he's like really pushing like, what is the issue? Why are you leaving? So <laughs> my partner says very pleasantly, I was in the room, he's very pleasant. And he says, well, we did have quite a lot of health and safety issues with the flat, you know, getting electrocuted, um, the toilet, the uh, heating, the water. Um, there's a lot of those sort of things and, and they did take quite a long time to get fixed, which um, where we both work from home and we're in it, you know, 24 seven, it was a bit of a struggle. Oh my, the landlord screams. And when I mean scream, I mean, I mean scream. My partner is standing across the room on the phone. It is not on speakerphone, but let me tell you, I heard every word that landlord said. So he is screaming. Um, this is a weird side note, but whenever this type of conflict came up, he always reminded us that he used to be in the military which take that for what you will. Um, it's a weird thing to throw out often when there's any sort of conflict, telling us, reminding us that he used to be in the military. Okay, now during the screaming, he mentions that we need to remove our details off of the ring doorbell so the new tenant can use it. Now, if you remember, the whole thing with the doorbell was he made us pay for half and said that we could take it with us when we leave. We had texts, we had emails, we had receipts. So at this point, my, my partner's kind of like, what? Like, <laughs> you told us that we could take it 
with us. I don't understand what's going on. The landlord screams a bit more, but ultimately hangs up the phone. We call the letting agency and explain what's just happened. We also send an email, so it's in writing, and basically request them that the landlord does not contact us, does not come to the property for our remaining 30 days. You know, we'll, we'll leave, but please do not have him come to the property or speak to us because he has been threatening and we're quite frankly scared. Now, after that conversation, ultimately he does come round to the flat, even though we have requested that he doesn't. Um, there was an instance where we had the external door open. I think someone was like coming in and out. Um, he saw that the, the door was open. He comes in to the garden area and is sort of looking around and then um, leaves. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm in the flat. I see him do this and I'm just, I'm scared. I don't know this person again. I don't know this person. He keeps telling us that he used to be in the military. I don't know why he's saying that. He's been verbally abusive in the past and he has entered the property without our permission in the past. So honestly, for that last month, I dead bolted our door. Um, always, it was always dead bolted during the day when we were working and at night when we were sleeping because honestly, I wasn't totally certain that something could happen. And I can't, again, can't explain to you that level of stress, you know, you're trying to work, I'm trying to produce content, you know, hopefully lighthearted, easy viewing content while all of this stuff is happening. I'm not sleeping. I'm just genuinely scared. And during all of that stress, we were not approved for the new flat, for this flat for weeks. And we didn't get our final move-in date, our official move-in date until the last week that we were at the old property. So I really thought we were gonna be homeless. It worked out though, and we moved. <laughs> So surely our troubles are over. Now the first night sleeping in this flat, honestly, I can't tell you the weight that just kind of comes off of you and you're just like, you feel safe and secure. And I slept, I can't even tell you how well I slept that first night, but we weren't finished. Now it was the battle over the deposit. Now again, I am not well versed in the law, but our deposit for the old property was held in a scheme. So it's sort of protected from all parties rather than being in the landlord's bank account and we would have to hope that he'd give it back to us. So it was part of the scheme and the idea being there would be an inspection of the property after we left and there would be like recommendations of repairs or fixes or that kind of thing. And the cost of those things could come out of our deposit if it was our fault or our issue sort of thing. Now the letting agency from the first place finally gets back to us. There are two main issues. The first issue is that we didn't get the outside of the windows cleaned and they want to bill us 12 pounds for that to take place. The second issue, the bigger issue, was that there was a section of carpet in the flat that was quite worn and the landlord wanted us to pay for the replacement carpet plus the labor of redoing it. So it was gonna be a couple hundred pounds um, out of our pocket to fix this section of carpet. Now, we had told the landlord and the letting agency that this particular section of carpet was quite worn. We had set it throughout the tenancy, um, but at that point they chose not to have it replaced, but they did want us to pay for the replacement when we left. So what do we do? Well, we researched and we spoke to a lot of different people and we decided that replacing the carpet was not our responsibility as a tenant. There is going to be normal wear and tear and naturally the highest traffic spot in the flat is gonna be worn through. Now the carpet wasn't damaged, it was just old. We also learn but please contact a professional, that you can claim back rent for days when your home is deemed inhabitable. So you have no working toilet, you have no heating, you have no hot water. Of course, at the time when those issues were happening, we had no idea, so we, we never raised that as an issue. So 
we decide, you know what, we've had a horrible time, we are not going to roll over yet again to be accommodating. You know, you, as a tenant, you wanna be accommodating, you don't wanna anger your landlord, but at this point, we were really angry. So we respond back after much deliberation, basically saying that we knew that we would be eligible for X amount of money due to the flat being un uninhabitable for so many days and that this amount of money far exceeds what they are trying to claim back from us for the window clean and replacing the carpet. Now we would be happy to take this matter further with our solicitor, or we would be happy to relinquish those repayments if we received our deposit back in full. We don't receive a response for seven whole days, seven whole days. And finally, we get an email back from the old letting agency, which basically said, understood your full deposit will be returned to you within 14 days. So while that was really exciting, we were gonna get our full deposit back. This issue was finally gonna be over and done with and just forget about it. At the same time, I felt so angry it felt like they were gonna see how much they could get from us uh and, and just kind of keep pushing it until we fought back and as a young person as a foreigner as someone who is not well versed in letting law or regulations it felt extremely overwhelming and scary and you really, I felt like, you know, taken advantage of, and it, it's not a nice feeling. So even though this whole experience has been extremely negative and stressful, and it just very overwhelming, I always try to look at things as learning experiences so I don't find myself in that situation again. And some of the things that I have taken away from that whole experience are taking your own photos, even though the letting agency will have photos of the property, take your own photos and take a lot of them. Take your own notes. So anytime you have a conversation or something is mentioned, you, you have your own notes to refer to with dates and times and what was said. And also now, every time you have a conversation on the phone with the letting agency, you follow that up with an email just saying, hey, as per our conversation today, I just wanna have a written note of what was said. Then it is, you know, in writing, the letting agency has it and you have it with dates and times and what was talked about. So there is always a record. I also learned about claiming back rent for days when your flat is uninhabitable. Obviously we didn't have to do that, but the fact that that is even an option is something that I had no idea about. And maybe on a more like critical aspect, I naively thought that letting agencies would do right by both parties, but I think I have learned, and maybe it's a good thing to remember, that they are employed by the landlord and um, that things maybe perhaps should be taken with a grain of salt and that, just because they email you something, think about it, do your research before responding too quickly. Now I realize having listened to all that drama and knowing that there's more drama underneath the surface, it sounds a bit extreme perhaps, a bit exaggerated, maybe a bit clickbaity, you know, bringing up old drama for the sake of clicks. But to be honest, this was my real experience. I have all the notes, I have all the photos, I have all the emails and the screenshots and going through that stuff again to sort of refresh my memory when, when writing out the points that I want to cover for this video. I just kind of got thrown back into just how truly dramatic and chaotic this whole experience was. And I don't mean to do this to name and shame. I really hope that this was an eye-opening video perhaps. And if any people watching who are renting or going to be renting, I really hope you can take some of these points to heart so you do not find yourself in the situation that I was in. While it was an absolutely terrible situation, I do feel like I am stronger because of it. I am more well prepared and I'm a bit more knowledgeable should anything happen in the future. If you wanna watch more about this whole moving drama, make sure to check out this video that I made while we were moving. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.